Welcome to this look at bees and chickens on Farming Simulator 22 with me, Mr. Sealy P. Let's get cracking. It's kind of a guide to kind of a test video, this one. Um, let's start with the bees. We'll move on to the chickens in a little while. I'm going to start off with the bees, the hives, what they need. Actually, they don't need anything, to be fair. Um, and then we'll move on to looking at the crop pollination side of things which might be a little bit more complicated but we'll see how that pans out i have given myself a little hard standing here to put the pallet um point on if you don't know anything about the bees at all um unlike on fs19 where you could place beehives and the bees would come in and out and you get paid per hour different amounts depending on the beehive the size of the beehives how many you placed that kind of thing well now with production chains and certain um parts of production chain needing honey you can now actually produce pallets of honey now what i'm not going to do on this one actually what we'll do we'll go straight into this menu um we'll go across our animals we'll go across down sorry down and across to our bees and then down one so what we're going to do first of all on the far right end end it says beehive honey pallet location location where honey generated by beehives is placed as, as pallets that can be put anywhere because you can place your beehives anywhere. So it doesn't really matter, it hasn't been right next to them, and you can only place one per farm. So what we'll do is hopefully... Now somebody did say how to raise and lower. I'm not quite sure, because that's on a bit of an angle. And I can't remember what they said. I want to stick it in the middle. That should be right, there we go. It's not quite straight, but that's where how um, I've made this way too big. That's where they're going to actually appear. Uh, so we go back into this menu and back to our animals. Bees, I'm covered in bees. I want to keep bees. I don't want them to go anywhere. I just want to keep them. All for me. So we've got the beehive. One Langstroth hive, two slots, 1,100 to buy. Then you've got a four Langstroth hive stack, two slots. 4,400, four times what the single one was. Then you've got a beehive elongated, two slots, 6,600. And then we've got the beehive 10 Langstroth hives, two slots, 12,500. The Langstroth 33 Langstroth hives, all in a big block. Also two slots, but 19 grand. Now the thing about it is, to show how much honey you would get from each one, I'd have to place each one, skip through time, then take that off, then place another one, skip through time. It would get a little bit complicated from that respect. Basically, what you need to know is the more you place, the more honey you'll make. If you haven't got much money to start off with, then buy one or buy four or whatever you can afford to buy. And then when you can afford to buy bigger ones, then buy the bigger sets. Obviously, you know, if you buy 33 of the single ones, it's 33 grand. Whereas if you buy the 33 stacks it's only 19 so it works out better more cost efficient to buy these ones but that's not always the case so what we're going to do now the problem I am finding is that's as close as you can zoom in I can come up a bit but it's knowing which way round the bees come out I think it's where that there you go that side of there see where the little lip is that's where the bees come out as far as I can tell so I'm going to place one there. They don't have to be, like I say, don't have to be close to this. I can put them anywhere I like. We're going to put one of those on. Come out. I'm going to put one of these down. Again, we'll rotate round. I don't think that's got a lip at the front there. And one there as well. So maybe we'll go with that one there. Stick that one there. Place this one there. These ones are a little bit bigger. Put that one there. And then we'll stick that one and with these ones. You can't really go wrong with where they're being placed. Like so. Now, uh, if, I, if you haven't watched any of my other animals videos, what you can do in this menu as well, if I go over and highlight it, and then press R3 on the PlayStation controller, you can... Oh, no, you can't on this one. Oh, okay. You can sell it. On a lot of them, you can rename them. I thought naming your hive would be quite cool. Um, but it does tell you the value, how old it is, that kind of thing. So if you go on to each one, it should then tell you about the hive itself. Or you can demolish them if, in this menu. If we go right the way across there to demolish, then highlight something. When you click on it, it'll ask you if you want to demolish that particular building, which I'm not going to do. So our bees are coming out of each one. 
I've got my months set on one day per month at the moment for something like this. Ah, now. That's something I didn't know. Get honey at pallet location. Range 100 metres. This is very peculiar. Range 150. Range 25. Range 50. So, the smaller one... Well, this is a bit of a worry, because you can only place one of these per map. Now, the bit I'm going to move on to after this is where we talk about... Um, no, I suppose it depends whether you want the honey or not. Mm, yeah. Um, these can be placed next to fields with canola, sunflower or potatoes in, and they're supposed to um, give you an increased yield through crop pollination. But if you've got one of these placed here, and I've got my canola field across the other side of the map, that's not going to reach. So I suppose there's going to be a difference between whether you place these and have them for honey, or place them for yield increase, is what we're going to be looking at. So I'm going to skip through time. We should get some pallets. This is just to see what each one is, what it looks like. We'll get them on there. I suppose the more interesting part of this, for me personally, is the crop pollination, to see what kind of yield boost we get from these. Um, and then when we've finished with the bees, we're going to move on to chickens. This is about bees and chickens, because these, I thought, would be the two easiest ones to do, so I thought I'd slam them together in one video. I will see you in a month. A month on, September. Okay. Thunder and rain. <laughs> we've got a bit of everything. I honestly thought... That's, what's that? That one's 33. That was 10, isn't it? 43, 47, 48, technically is that 149, we've got one pallet, don't think we can pick this one up can we, no. uh, one pallet of honey in a month with all of those, I suppose if you have multiple ones of those you're going to get a lot more or you know whatever multiples you're going to have, it depends what you've got your month set on, like mine's one day, so technically it's been one day and we've got one pallet, um, if you've got multiple days that may well change but that's what the pallets look like they've got the jars of honey in we take those off to the next step in the production chains and there you go that i mean that's as easy as bees get they don't require anything else you just place them and away they go uh, so what i'm going to do now is we're going to move on to have a look at um crop pollination so as we've just seen the bees will produce honey anyway regardless what's going to happen this is kind of the next step on. This is the more complex part of bees. And this is to do with what was mentioned about pollination. About putting beehives near a field and then pollinating the crop to increase the yield. So what we're going to do is go down to this menu here. Go to our animals and go down to bees. Beehives produce honey, which can be processed further or sold directly. Place your beehives next to fields and you will soon be living in the land of milk and honey, as the bees will increase the yield of canola, sunflower and potato fields. Honey will be delivered to the freely placeable delivery area. We know that bit already. But what it doesn't say is what that yield increase is. What, you know, there's no percentage increase. Do we get better yield the more beehives you have placed? Or is it just having a beehive next to it? Can you get away with just placing the smallest possible one and you'll get increased yield? So that's what I'm kind of wanting to test, test now. This field is in, I mean, it really doesn't matter what state it's in because I'm going to be using this field over and over. I've saved it at this point. So this is my test plot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put canola in the ground. Now, as it stands, it is fully fertilised. I didn't do that, it's already fertilised. I took all the rocks out, I went along with the rock picker, it's done that. I'm assuming this will allow me to see straight into here because I haven't done my uh, Groundworks video yet. Uh, and it, So it should be good to go. I've only got seed in there, not fertiliser, because like I say, it's already fertilised. It was ploughed before I did the stones, um, and it doesn't need lime. So whatever the yield is we get from this crop, that's going to be our baseline because I'm going to come back to this point again to do the next step. So all I'm going to do is put canola into the ground. I'm going to skip through till it's ready to harvest. We'll harvest the field and see what we get as a yield. 
I'm going to come back out, come back into the save to this point again. I'm going to place a beehive because I don't know again. This is part, of, you know, if I plant the crop, then place the beehive, will it not register the increase in yield? Do I need to have the bees there first before the crop goes in the ground? I don't know. So I'm going to place a beehive. We'll sow the ground with canola. We'll let it grow and we'll see if there's a yield difference. Then I'm going to come back again and I'm going to place several beehives and see if multiple beehives increase the yield even further. Now, it may be a kind of obvious thing of, well, no, that's not going to work, or that should work. or Again, this is all new to the game. Bees we've had before, bees producing honey we haven't. Bees increasing yield of crops, that's a whole new thing. Pollination of crops, we've never had that before. So what I'm going to do now then, is jump in. I'm going to hire a worker because, you know, why not? As far as I can tell, we are seeding. Seed usage is pretty good. Now it seems like a fairly big field. I wanted to get a decent amount on here because if I do a really small field, you could get discrepancies. So I thought the bigger the field, the better the, the sort of yield is going to be anyway. Then I think bees that sh we should see a difference. Um, I've got a fairly big harvester so sat there, so I'll skip ahead. Now on this particular test map I haven't got seasonal growth on, so this should grow. Something CLEG mentioned, and again I personally have overlooked something I didn't even dawn on me in the menus. If we go up to our menus for our settings for fields etc. So you've got seasonal growth on or off, um, and then you've got the days per month, and you've got your fixed visuals and snow, crop destruction, periodic ploughing, field stone, lime, weeds. There's nothing about crop growth speed. Now, obviously, if you've got seasons switched on, seasonal growth on, it's going to go through those seasons. There's the potential for withering, that kind of thing. If you turn seasonal growth off, it gets rid of the growth calendar so you can grow your crops and harvest them to your heart's content. But we always used to have that setting where you could turn it off completely, growth off, and then slow, normal, or fast. That doesn't appear to be there anymore. I don't think I've missed a setting anywhere that shows that. So, um, yeah, I'll get this first one done. We'll speed through. I'll harvest the crop. We'll get our base figure. Uh, then we'll come back to this point. We'll place the beehive. Go again. Then we'll do the same thing. Um, I just want to be kind of, I want to be as thorough as I can be. If it is going to give us a yield increase, is it going to be significant? Is it not really? Is it, you know, we'll see. first phase is coming to a close and I'm just realising when I move on to the next phase so I'm going to go back to the save uh, and I'm going to seed again but we're going to put a beehive down I'm going to need a trailer because if we do get increased yield I'm going to have to empty this harvester so first test off the field with no beehives no extra yield bonus for pollination or anything like that 16,291 which is excellent. But the other thing I've just suddenly thought of is I'm going to have to throw in an extra step. The extra step is going to be this. Because the beehives, as we've already seen, come in different shapes and sizes, if I just go for the biggest one first, how do I know that using a smaller one wouldn't give us a smaller yield? You know, it's a tricky one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one singular one, I think. I'm just... It's, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, somebody messaged to say if I do L1 and D-pad you can get your um, build menu without having to go into the other menu which is rather handy, I didn't know that um, so yeah, L1 and D-pad no, not L1 and D-pad L1 and, uh, you know sensory pad in the middle and that works, so let's go across to our animals we go back to our beehives so yeah, what I'm thinking is 
just a one Langstrom Hive. I'll run this test again, see what the yield comes out at. Then what we'll do on the th third test, because yeah, up into the third test, we'll stick in a 33 Langstroth hive, so Langstrom Langstroth hive, and see what happens. If there is an increase, then on the fourth test, I'll stick in two of the 33 Langstroth hives and see if it increases again. It, you know, again, this is that kind of thing of, well, it should be this, it should be that. We just don't know. It's all new. Got to give it a go and see what happens. Because if it turns out multiple hives is going to give you a much higher yield, then we'll go for it. But if it turns out you can just place a singular one and get the same yield, why pay out extra money for more, you know, Yes, obviously you want your bees to produce honey as well, but if you can use it for extra yield and just place one of those by every single field, that makes perfect sense. Um, I'll see you in a second. We'll place a beehive. We'll go again. So I need to come out and come back to the previous save. Here we are. <laughs> back where we started, ready to go again. Only difference this time is we need to place a beehive. So let's place, like I said, let's place the single... Where can I place it? Oh, where shall I place it? If I put it... I'm just thinking if when we get to the larger ones, whether I have enough from that side. So what I'm going to do is we'll place it this side. Um, I don't think it really matters what way around we do it. I don't think it will matter as well how close to the, to the field it needs to be. Is there a particular way around it needs to be? Difficult to tell, isn't it? Let's just stick it there. Okay. No pallet location. Oh, okay, I suppose I should put one of those down, shouldn't I? So they can be doing that as well. Should have placed that before, shouldn't I? Uh, doesn't matter, does it? We'll just stick it behind there. And away we go again. I'll hire a worker, so it'll do exactly the same as it did last time. Off it goes. We'll put the canola in the ground. So this time, as the canola's going into the ground, <laughs> any early germination, anything that happens, we have a beehive there already. I'd like to say I was worried about planting, then placing the beehive, and there being an issue. So I'll crack on. So I'll do the same as I did before. I will see you much later, probably through now into March or whatever long it is. Now, weirdly, this is seasonal growth off, which means you can you don't have to worry about planting windows. It's still taking... I've got this set on one-day seasons. It's still taking me months for the crop to grow. It's not like it was on FS19, where you get that, you know, you, over the course of 24 hours, your crops will grow on fast. It's still taking months. So there's not a quick answer to, to it at all. Okay, harvest two complete. 16,296. A whole seven litres. No, not even seven litres. Five. What am I talking about? Yeah, 16,291, 16,296. Five litres difference. Now, there could be a reason for that. It could, I mean, oh, I don't know. Could it be that? Is it because the beehive isn't facing towards the field, so the bees are going that way and not that way? I mean, I... I can't believe that would be the thing, but if it is the thing, that's not much of an increase at all. I mean, that could just be accounted for in a mild fluctuation of something. Um, next test will be, I would say, easier in so much as, because I'm going to be using the bigger hives, you know which way the front is, so we can point them into the field. Multiple hives, let's see. Um, in the time it took for those crops to grow, we have got some honey from that one hive. Obviously, like I say, it's one hive and it's taken quite a while to get to that point. So, I'm going to reset. See you again. <laughs> we'll go for it. Um, what I'm going to do this time, I won't um, necessarily go through the process of showing you me placing the hive, planting everything. We'll probably jump to the end. and I'll sh The hive will be there. I'll show you it. Um, and then we'll see where we're at. <laughs> Just, yeah, I'm a little bit surprised by that one. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> At this moment in time, I'm a little bit disappointed. 16,508, it is an increase. I've had to put 33 hives. Yes, it's in one big block. Um, that's an increase of well, not very much at all. 200 and something. 
213, what does it work out at? I mean, it's, it's about, it's over 1%, between 1 and 2% increase in productivity. I think it was oversold. <laughs> I think, let's just say that. If I go back into this menu again, um, this probably is where it sums it up best. If we go down to the bees and we have a look at this again. Um, it does say beehives produce money, honey. Uh, it will be placed at centralised location. That's um, which has to be bought and placed separately. That's for the, um, the uh, what do we call it? The honey pallet location. Um, if you place beehives near fields, certain crops will also have a slightly increased yield. Slightly is the understatement of the century. So the f final test then. I'm going to reset again. Hey, I'm doing this testing so you don't have to, people. Um, and I'm going to put a load of them. I'll put about five or six along there, I don't know. If we get 16,508 or close again, then it's, it's irrelevant. Um, if it's, I mean, the silly thing is, if it doesn't increase it by a little bit each time, you're going to end up with fields just completely encircled with beehives, aren't you? It's going to cost a fortune for that small increase. I don't know, we'll see, but I will, I will test it again. And let's see if we get more than 16,508. Um, see you in a couple of seconds. Final test with bees then. So the last run through, 16,709 litres. That's up 200 litres on the previous one, which was what, 16,509. And our initial one was 16,291. So, you know, we're up... Yeah, not a lot. 500 litres in total. But we have seen an improvement each time, albeit very, very slight. To get that 200 litres extra, I had to place this many beehives. So, yield improvement from pollination? Crop, crop pollination? Yes, there is a yield improvement. It is minuscule. If you're going to be placing beehives anyway on your map, then stick them next to your fields where you're going to be doing canola potato. I mean, you'll get a little bit of improvement. If you're going to place them anywhere, why not? The bonus to having that many, whilst it wasn't a massive yield improvement, was the amount of honey we produced, which was absolutely loads. But it has also highlighted another thing. And that's the spawn point for our pallets of honey. We've got quite a few from all, I mean, there's a lot of hives there, to be fair. That one spawned in the ground. And I, I cannot, I've tried with the forklift, I've tried shoving it, pushing it, lifting it, twisting it, I just cannot get out of the ground. That's a worry. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, um, crop pollination does work. I say, is it worth it? It doesn't, it doesn't cost anything other than buying the beehives. And like I say, we're going to buy them anyway. Doesn't really matter. So, that's bees. On to chickens. Chickens should be a little bit easier, shouldn't they? <laughs> Fingers crossed. Onwards then. Chickens it is. We'll go into the menu. Well, the placeables menu, that is. The two our animals, we go along. Also down one, go along to our chickens. We have two pens available. We've got the chicken pasture, which holds 30. I've already placed two. Um, that is usually two slots, 6,000 to buy. And then we've got next to that the chicken coop. That's usually nine slots. That's 79 grand, a bit more expensive. And that will take 360. You can feed these wheat, barley or sorghum. They don't need any water. And the same as it was with the... Um, I didn't notice with the cows. I wish I'd have paid more attention. But definitely the sheep... There's no section for cleaning them up or anything like that. Um, but here's where things are a little bit more interesting, I guess. It's a little bit strange. All of those lovely chickens we saw on the videos and the screenshots and stuff that were released before. And on the previous version of Seasons and FS19, you had the different breeds. And the ones that were meat birds, the ones that were egg layers, and the ones that were more prolific egg layers. And, you know, unfortunately... That's not the case. If we go on here, we've got chicken, chicken and rooster. Now, I know it's, they're white there, but you'll see in just a second. These ones are our newborns. And 
they need to reach eight months old before they will start reproducing. The re reproduction cycle is only two months long. So these chickens are six months old. I remember it's six months then. Yeah, so reproduction age is six months, not eight months. And they re reproduce every two months. And then we've got our roosters there, but they reproduce um, every 10 months. Um, there's nothing anywhere that says what the ratio of roosters to chickens needs to be. So in this one, I'm going to do a test. I'm going to put, because this only holds, what does it hold? 30. I'm going to put five of our newborns in. And then we're going to go to our older birds, our six month olds. And this it varies for the different animal types and what the size of pens are. I think when I showed it on the cows, because I was on a smaller pen, it went up to a maximum of a certain amount. But this one will go up to, I think it's 60. I'm sure it went up to, oh, okay. Oh, this is a smaller pen. Of course it is, it's a smaller pen. The other one, I'm sure it went up to 60. It allowed me to do in one go. So much easier than that constant click, 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 click. Because, you know, if you want to get a lot of chickens, that's a lot of clicking with your fingers. So, actually what we'll do, we'll bring that down to, hold 30 in total. Let's bring it down to 15. So 15 and 5. But in this one, I'm not going to put any roosters because I'm curious to see, will they still produce eggs without roosters? And will they, will they reproduce without roosters as well? Just out of curiosity. But as you can see, although the picture shows white birds, when you buy them, you get a random selection of the, um, I suppose, like the Bantams, Rhode Island Reds, maybe the Speckleds, the Speckled Jims. <laughs> But I love the actual the animations on these, the flapping of the wings, the ones that suddenly run across. There you go, look. They're really it's very well done. Although I did notice as well as I did with the sheep, you do get the odd runaway that comes through the fence. So that's that. We'll put some feed in a moment. And if we go to our barn, feed points there. Oh yeah, the um, egg point is just on the end where the pallets will spawn. Our dialogue box is here, and I'm going to put a few more in this one. So this one, I think I'm going to put 10 of our uh, newborns. And then our, our other ones, I'm going to put, I'm going to go for, just see what the maximum is it will let me do. 60, yeah. 60 in one go makes life so much easier. Let's do 60. And I'm going to put some roosters in this one. I don't know, five maybe, I um, I say that it doesn't say anywhere, but now we can open this door and we can come into here. This door opens here. We can go through. Oh, this is that one. If we go to the panel here and click open door, you know, the panel opens. Get some air in for the birds. Let's close that one. We can open that one and go back out that way. This way, your egg pallets will spawn. I say no water or anything, so we just need to give them some feed. Let me just close out of the door. Then we'll speed up time, see what eggs we get, whether they will produce eggs. And after two months, where do we look and where does it stand with regard to the reproduction of the animals? Well, I inadvertently managed to highlight something uh, for myself. As you can see, we're now in December, so we've gone four months. I skipped forward two months, <laughs> then realised I didn't put any feed in. Um, but the thing about that was it proved that you don't get any um, deaths. Uh, as you did on FS19, if they didn't get feed or water, you could lose animals with seasons on. Didn't feed them for two months and was fine. As you can see, no roosters. We have got eggs. There you go. If we go over another side, with roosters, we've got a lot more eggs, but we've got a lot more birds. So we're likely to get a lot more eggs in here. Obviously, we've been through four months. The other thing is, as well, with these pallets, unlike a lot of the other ones, we can pick these pallets up. So you can load up your vehicles, pickups, whatever it is, wherever you want to put them. You can load them in. So the pallets are pick upable. So let's have a look at the menu then and see where we stand with regard to um, births. So there's our roosters. They're our, well, what were our new birds, are now four months old. They're our six months old, which are now 10 months old, and they have given birth. It only takes two months, they've given birth to 60 newborns. So it's a one for one, the same as it was with the um, sheep and pretty much, I think it was with the cows as well. 
Oh, no, I didn't get to cows. Did I for new birds? But sheep, definitely. It's a one for one. So how many birds you've got, when they go through their reproduction cycle, you'll get the same amount reproduced. Now, interestingly, with the pasture, um, whilst it's showing there as our 5 and our 15, we've got 10 new births there. The site where you think, oh, OK, well, 10 new births, that's not great. Um, that's obviously because there's no roosters in there. The reason there's only 10 and not a one-for-one -one new birth ratio like it is on the, on the, um, the chicken coop is because um, we've reached our maximum. The pasture only holds 30. I had 15 and 5 in there already, so we would have got 15 new births, but it was full. So I, I couldn't get any more new births. We're up to our maximum anyway. So you don't need to have the roosters. They're producing eggs and they're reproducing. So I got a one for one anyway. So having the roosters didn't really make any difference. I mean, the only thing I think is if you want to go for a bit more added realism and you want to have your roosters in there, it doesn't seem to work in the same way as it did with the season's mod on FS19. Not really much else to the chickens in that regard. Oh, you can't transport them. Um, there's nothing in game. If we go to our, um, no, not that menu, if we go to this menu to our tools and go to animal transport, We've got two for horses. That one there will do cows, pigs and sheep. Still nothing with regard to transportation. And obviously when you put in here, it's a bit of a joke where it says a transport fee is applied if you do not transport the animals with your own livestock trailer. You can't. You've got no choice. So you have to pay the price anyway. Um, and obviously the more chickens you have, any new births, if you want to, you can sell them on. You can let them get a bit older, worth a little bit more, then sell them on. However you want to go about it is up to you. So you're getting the eggs, which obviously part of the production chain thing, coming very, very handy as well now. Not You're not just taking off to sell them. You can then use them further on in the production chains. So that's it. That's bees and chickens. A few bits of information wrapped up in all of that that you might not have known. So, yeah, it might have come in handy. I hope you found it useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.